morning folks Kyle here dark 30 outdoors I hope the uh, Sun is uh, just coming up there over my shoulder I hope it's not too much glare I suppose I could turn us around here I'm a clear fork again going after the muskies today is about big fish I've got lures that I have confidence in that will put muskies in the boat I'm gonna take them off because uh, I'm looking for the bait that's going to put the big fish in the boat. I'm going for the big fish bite. Today is all about big fish. I'm in the hunt for the, the big mama. Uh, it's time for me to uh, get serious about putting a, a, a big mama in the boat. That's the goal for today. Stay with me, folks. It's going to be a beautiful day here at Clear Fork. Chasing the muskies once again. And again, hoping for a monster muskie. Stay with me. Alright folks. That's the gist of the arsenal right there. Four planos worth of baits. Which one's going to be the big fish bait? Huh? Marking fish pretty deep. Eight to ten. Don't have much of a breeze, and I don't expect one today either. They're calling for the wind to be five mile an hour or less. So I do believe trolling is going to be the uh, the deal here today. So uh, probably looking at something from there or something from there. A lot of bright baits. It might go. I might go with that Chad color fade. I might go with a, a bright perch. Decisions, decisions. What am I going to put out there today? Looking for a monster muskie. Hey, folks. Well, you know, it's been a tough day. <laughs> Fishless day. So, uh, yeah, I got here bright and early at Clear Fork, and I have fished... Uh, all day long and uh, haven't really haven't really had any any uh, rips or bites or nothing I haven't caught a fish it's a fishless day I thought I would take a few minutes and go over my setup this will be kind of like some uh, some setup tips for beginners you want to just get into musky fishing I'm gonna show you a couple things here real quick and that's the tools right you want to get started in musky fishing, you got to have the right tools. The uh, musky net, if you saw my video from last year, I upgraded the bag. This is a fin saver bag. It's rubber coated. The netting is. Uh, hooks don't really get tangled in this. They can get stuck in it a little bit, but they don't wrap up and tangle in it very much at all. Plus, it's a nice, nice deep bag. So, uh, the fish, the fish usually lay in there real nice they, they don't get too uh, agitated and thrash around too much that's the first thing you want it. it's got a nice long handle a nice big opening you want a good a really really good net um, and then the next thing is I want to show you if you're gonna get started in musky fishing it's real real important is your tools right and I you see these are out right I have them out and on the ready haven't caught a fish today, but these are out and on the ready. I got my uh, my heavy heavy duty pliers. I got some smaller pliers, and then I, I also got hook cutters right here. If you want to have those uh, available and on the ready before you go musky fishing, be sure you have those essential tools. Okay, those are essential tools to do this. For trolling, uh, the Downies rod holders make life easy. I'm going to show you that real quick. This, my tackle bag handle is not part of it, but that just secures it when I'm when I'm traveling. This is the down east rod holder, okay? You lift this uh, this aperture up and it opens. You see how that opened right up? And you lay your rod in there, and as you press your rod down in there, it locks in. You can also turn it at an angle that way. 
you can loosen this nut and, and you know loosen your clamp a little bit and you can angle that up or you can angle it down we can angle it down so that the rods go in, down into the water uh, I can show you that real quick there you go on this one you can see that I have adjusted the angle down a, a little bit uh, of a downward angle and so my uh, my rod tip is now down in the water. I don't know if you saw that weed that just went by that was floating on the surface. That is very, very handy. If you're fishing a lake that has a lot of weeds on the surface, I better bring this back inside the boat before I drop it. If you have a lot of weeds that are on the surface, that rod being down in the water like that, that'll catch those weeds instead of your line catching the weeds because when your line catches the weeds that are on the surface they follow your line down to your bait and they follow your bait so the down east rod holders those are s10 style double clamp rod holders those are critical and then this rod here you can see that i have it it's just kind of a plastic uh, cheapy rod holder eventually i will upgrade this for now it works uh it it works okay because the rod is pointed straight out the back of the boat so when I do get a bite get a fish on it doesn't put a tremendous amount of pressure on this rod the drag of the the, the drag of the, the reel will release that heavy heavy pressure from a fish so this is less than ideal but it does work I use this because and I don't know how well this is showing up on the camera but if you see the uh, prop wash from my boat, my line is going right down into the prop wash. Musky fishing, musky trolling, it is super, super good idea to put a bait in the prop wash. And that's whether you're putting your bait 10 feet behind the boat, 15 feet behind the boat, 30 feet, 80 feet. I always want to have a bait right in the prop wash. Um, Generally speaking, I don't long line when I have a bait in the prop wash. I'm going to run that bait anywhere from about 12 feet back to about 30 feet back. That's my bait in the prop wash. So that's another tip. When you set up your, your boat and your rod holders for musky trolling, you definitely want to set your rod holders up so that you can get a bait in the prop wash. One last thing, and disregard the mess here. When you're not catching fish, you tend to pull all your baits out and stuff. That's I usually keep it a little bit tidier than that. But if you see, I've got this rod goes straight out. And, and then on this one, I've got it set up so that the rod would go straight out. And then this this one in the prop wash, it goes straight out, or straight behind the boat. So the rod tips for all three of these rods, I would only run three rods if I have a guest on my boat. They're far away from each other. That will that will help you so that when you're making your turns, even if you make tight turns, you're not going to get all tangled up. If I set up my rod holder so that all three rods are right here at the back of the boat, when I make my turns, my baits can cross, my lines can cross, the baits can get all fouled up, and we don't want that. We don't want that at all. So... That's the basics to set up your boat for trolling. Make sure you've got the right tools. And then, uh, you know, if you get the downies clamp on rod holders, they just clamp right onto your boat. I've seen them on Amazon for anywhere from $40 to $45. Sometimes they have them, sometimes they don't. Just keep checking. Those are made out of a hardened cast aluminum, so they're never going to rust. They're going to last forever. Mine are uh, two years old. My uncle has uh, four on his boat, and I think they are uh, probably going on 20 years old, uh, maybe even older than that. So, yeah, th those will last forever. That's about it, folks. That's about it. If you have any questions about my setup, if you have any questions about a, a, a beginner setup for trolling, uh, be sure and put those in the comments down below. I welcome any comments or feedback that you might have. And once again, thanks for watching.